Welcome! This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features electronic magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are the features we have for you this week. On Motoring Forum, we shall have once again ANCAS Chief Transport Advocate George Royeka on the second part of our feature on ANCAS's role as an interim solution to traffic. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on the first stop, first to go rule. This week's Spying Chauffeur shall be about the illegal practice of most PUV drivers of overloading passengers. The public service segment shall have the computer's woes on LRT2 partial shutdown. Showcase this week shall have the sports car from Honda, the Civic Type R. While for race weekend, we'll have the highlights of the 2019 Philippine Autocross Championship Series, the final showdown held at Robinson Santa Rosa. All these plus the latest news on the country's transportation and traffic management are on this edition of Motor In Today. Join us! Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven-seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good. With the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Welcome back. Motoring Today now starts with the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. 
The DPWH has done a final inspection of the first sections of the Cavite Laguna Expressway or Cala X, which cover the Mamplasan Barrier onto the Laguna Techno Park Interchange, the Laguna Boulevard Interchange, all the way to the Santa Rosa Tagaytay Interchange. According to DPWH Secretary Mark Villar, the project is already 90% completed and that they are fast tracking the remaining 10%, which are portions of the extra sway. Itong segment yung nakikita nyo ngayon na uh, around 90% na yung uh, civil works dito hanggang ano Santa Rosa. The entry and exit points at Mamplasan, Binyan and Santa Rosa Tagaytay Road were opened last October 30th in time for Undas. Approximately 10,000 cars were expected to enter and exit through these two access points. Secretary Villar added that a big cut on travel time compared to the 45 minutes it usually takes to travel Mamplasan to Santa Rosa Tagaytay Road. Well, uh I expected the uh, traffic here is about the uh, expectation around 10,000. As you can see now, halos uh, yung itong 10 kilometer segment ng uh, Laguna is uh, almost complete. Ang labas nito yung Santa Rosa Tagaytay Road. So papasok po kayo sa Mamplasan and then the direction na 10 kilometers, ang labas dyan Santa Rosa, para, pero lampas na ng commercial establishment ng Santa Rosa. So at least, hindi na kayo matatraffic sa Santa Rosa area. Kung ang pupuntahan nyo is Tagaytay or Batangas, pwede nyo na pong gamitin itong alignment at uh, ito, mabilis po. At, and at least, yung exit nyo, hindi na Santa Rosa, ang exit nyo is Mamplasa. So magkakaroon ng alternative route at the same time, ito po ay true and true. So mabilis lang, eh. ten, kung 10 kilometers, more or less, we can expect the... Uh, uh, less than 10 minutes or yung biyahe. The DPWH Secretary also stressed that in order to decongest Santa Rosa Tagaytay Road, Governor's Drive, Aguinaldo Highway, it is imperative to deliver the total 45-kilometer length of Cala X by June 2022. Once completed, it will only take about 45 minutes to an hour to drive from Mamplasa to Kawit, Cavite and will serve about 50,000 vehicles. Cala X is designed to be a four-lane tolled expressway that will connect Cavitex in Cawit to South Luzon Expressway at their Mamplasan Interchange in Binyan, Laguna. Meanwhile, Valenzuela City joined the government's Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program with a turnover of an initial 17 modernized PUVs from Isuzu Philippines Corporation to Metro Valenzuela Transport Service Cooperative or MetroVal TSC. During the formal turnover held at the parking grounds of Metroval TSC, Mr. Celso Encila Jr., Metroval TSC chairman, said they are optimistic that they can promote development of the transport service to the newly acquired Isuzu PUVs. Ito po ay uh, launching po namin ng first 17 units ng Isuzu. So ito po yung bagong kuha namin, ang modernized na unit. We are officially turned over 17 units of Isuzu PUVs to Metro Valenzuela Transport Service Cooperative, which will be operating at Valenzuela City. We are very honored to be providing them their fast modern PUVs. Chairman and Sila also gave route information in which PUVs will go around Valenzuela. Marami po kaming ruta. Meron po kaming uh, Madolos Malinta, Ladel Malinta, Malanday Divisoria, Malanday Recto, Malanday Pier, at Megabayad Monumento. Basta, Sakop namin ng kwan, Bulacan, Balinsuela, Kaloocan, Maynila. Yun ang nasasakop ng aming mga ruta. The 17 modernized PUVs have been assembled using the Isuzu QKR77 platform with the rear body designed and manufactured by Almazora Motors Corporation. They are all air-conditioned Class 2 PUVs with a side-facing seat configuration. The Isuzu QKR platform is assembled in the Philippines and is equipped with Euro 4 compliant 4JH1TC diesel engines that deliver fuel economy. These PUVs are mounted on our very reliable Isuzu QKR Class 2 with body developed by one of the country's leading bodybuilders, Armazora Motors. And our promising PUVs aim to improve the transportation of communities and gives them a handful of benefits such as safety and convenience. These PUVs are also environment friendly as it complies with Euro 4 standard. The new PUV body is compliant with Philippine national standards with the passenger cabin providing more space for passengers to move easily inside. The passenger door is safely situated on the right-hand side facing the sidewalk. 
Other design features of the body include panoramic windows and windshields, full body insulation, and automatic door closer. Ang ating pong makabagong PUB na piling na ay compliant sa Philippine National Standards, provided po siya ng uh, malawag na upuan na uh, kaya po makaupo uh, ang 20 passenger pero tuwing uh, rush hour, ang ating pong uh, taas ng uh, sasakyan is 1.75 kaya kaya pa po makaupo ang maraming tao para uh, hindi sila mahuli uh, during rush hour. The Isuzu modern PUVs are customized with various accessories such as Wi-Fi, GPS, CCTV, LED displays, and automatic fare collection system enabling cashless operations, all geared for passenger safety and added convenience. Ang uh, makabagong jeepney, uh, modern PUB, ay ginawa ng uh, Duterte government para makapag-provide ng uh, convenient, safe, and comfortable mode of transportation para sa mga Pilipino. Ito na po ang bagong... Uh, tatakbo sa ating mga kalsada mula ngayon and in, the, uh, and, and in the near future. The 17 modern PUVs that Metro Vault TSC is now using are the latest additions in support of the government's efforts to modernize all PUVs by June 2020, as embodied in the PUV modernization program that envisions the replacement of some 200,000 PUVs nationwide that are 15 years and older with new, safe, and environmentally friendly vehicles. For Metroval TLC, a well-established transport entity in Valenzuela, and its acquisition of Isuzu Modern PUVs will not only provide world-class transport to its riding public, but will also make it possible for the cooperative to reap the numerous after-sale advantages of Isuzu's vaunted PUVX program. And finally, the MMDA has announced that they have earned the cooperation of the DPWH, shopping mall operators, water utility and telecommunication companies in carrying out traffic contingency measures in a bid to ease the anticipated traffic during the holiday season. In a recent meeting held at the MMD headquarters, MMD General Manager Jojo Garcia and concerned representatives have agreed to implement the following action plans from November 11th to January 10th next year. The whole Metro Manila na po, no? Ting ng mall natin will be 11 a.m. Magiging problema sa parking nila kahit private property, masyadong matagal, no? Yung pag-check ng security, which of course, no? Dapat lang. We cannot compromise sa security and safety, di ba? Ang request na natin, magpadagdag sila ng guard na magcha-check para at least mas mabilis yung security check nila kasi pag misan sa mall, kahit na private property yan, napuno yung loob, gumagapang sa labas ng traffic sa kalsada. Yung mga may mga... may mga loading and loading bay sa mall, no? Uh, may sarili nga sila, so nagpapasalamat tayo na pinapasok na, hindi sa kalsada umihinto. Ang problema lang, napupunong po yung loading and loading bay sila, so gumagapang yan sa EDSA, yung mga bus. So, nakapag-usap naman kami, yung, uh, ang meron lang naman dyan, SM, eh, no? sa yung Trinoma, na kailangan nilang i-enforce na yung mga bus, huwag uh, magtagal na paansin dyan. Pagka napuno yung base nila at meron pang bus sa labas, hindi na natin papapasokin doon, padindiretso yun na natin. No? Yung ating delivery schedule na 11 uh, p.m. to 5 a.m. tuloy ulit. No? Uh, of course, except yung mga perishables ano natin. No? Bawal po ang sale during man, uh, Monday to Friday. No? Except, on November 15, meron isang mall na may sale na na-announce na. Yan, payagan na natin yan. Yung pong re-blocking sa EDSA, saka sa C5, uh, stop muna natin no? by November. Of course, hindi yung mga butas-butas yan na nagkakos ng traffic lalo, yan, re-repair natin yan. I'm talking about yung re-blocking na pinapaganda lang, kino-cosmetic natin. 
by next year na yan, no? But priority projects ng DPWH will still push through. Lalong-lalo na itong sa C, ano, sa SLEX LX Connector, no? Kailangan tapusin na natin yan. So, yung mga priority projects po ng government, hindi natin pipigilan yan. At lalo pa nating tutulungan para mapabilis. Garcia reiterated that these measures have been laid down to somehow reduce anticipated traffic congestion, particularly along EDSA during the holidays. There are at least 100 shopping malls in Metro Manila and the MMDA said these malls are considered traffic generators during the holidays and delaying their operating hours by an hour could help ease the traffic situation in Metro Manila. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Here's Ray Louie. Thanks, Suzy. We continue our discussion with ANCAS Chief Transport Advocate, George Rieka, on the motorcycle ride-hailing app's role as an interim solution to traffic while infrastructure projects are ongoing. Citing these studies made by Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, there's a 3.5 billion pesos per day loss, 5 billion peso plus in 2035 due to traffic. But according to Rieka, more than this, Traffic has also a non-quantifiable impact on people. One thing that's not quantifiable is really the personal impact um, to the society. Giving out some examples on how traffic affects us daily, Royeka claimed that our major life decisions are actually hinged on traffic. What we don't realize is a lot of our major life decisions is actually hinged on traffic. Yun yung pinaka biggest factor natin eh. Lalabas ka ng bahay, traffic. Lalabas ka ng bahay, wag na lang. The traffic situation here in the metro and even outside of it, it's very unpredictable. Rieko then hopes that this could be solved through infrastructure projects and improves transport systems. The unpredictability is what kills you. Eh. Hindi mo maplano yung buhay mo kasi hindi mo alam yung condition ng daan, condition ng traffic. And hopefully, this will be resolved with subway systems, with our rail system, to a certain extent with our bus system, if we're, you know, if we're all disciplined enough. Roeka also reiterated that everyone contributes to the Metro Manila traffic, therefore we should all take part in solving it. The government, the private sector, and the public. Metro Manila traffic, EDSA traffic, is everybody's fault. Okay, it's the fault of the private motorists. It's the fault of the public utility vehicles. Lahat po tayo may kasalanan dyan. Hindi po yan fault ng motorsiklo kasi pagewang-gewang siya dun sa misplaced na motorcycle lane. Hindi yan fault ng bus kasi he takes up two, two lanes on the side at tumitigil sa sakit na ng daan. Hindi rin yan fault ng private motorist na ini-insist na pumunta dun sa bus lane all the time kahit may enforcer sa harap. It's everyone's fault. And the only way to fix this if everybody works together. And I think what happened to ANCAS is we've proven na the government, the private sector, and the public, kasama po yung publiko dito, kasi yung publiko yung nagbibigay po ng feedback sa public sector, sa gobyerno, can work together to solve a problem. Now with ANCAS, yung two hours mo nagiging at least one hour na lang. Yung isang oras mo nagiging 30 minutes. It really cuts your travel time in half. According to Rieka, ANCAS maintains its 99.997% safety record and a 0.003% accident rate as the company took the time to train its motorcycle drivers. Addressing what many call as Kamote Riders, Rieka said that we should look into having an institutionalized education system. Galit na galit kayo sa sinasabi niyong Kamote Rider sa habal-habal na naglalagay ng more than one passenger. Yung Kumuha ba yan ng lisensya or buong buhay nila, meron bang nagturo sa kanila at nagsabi sa kanila na bawal yun? I'm talking about as institutionalized education system. Ha? I'm not talking about sinabi mo na sa kaibigan mo na bawal yan kasi hindi ka eksperto. Eh. A school, right, that will train every single motorcycle rider. Because in Angkas, we've proven it. Eh. Yung Pilipino, pag tinuruan mo, susunod. Pero, wag mong i-expect yung magic. Yung hindi mo tuturuan, tas ini-expect mo mag-helmet. ba? Yung hindi mo tuturuan, tas mag-expect mo dapat magaling na sila magmotor. Hindi po pwede yun. ba? Let's also look at it from where they're coming from. 
We've trained 110,000 bikers to date. Libre po to. We work with the LGUs, we work with the government agencies. But we've only onboarded 27,000. We've failed more than 70%. And that 27,000 has resulted to a 0.003% safety record. So, kung gawin po natin tama yung sistema natin, marami pong susunod eh. Ang problema, and I'm not pointing fingers because this is inherited since the beginning of time, di ba? Yung mga shortcuts, di ba? Yung mga allowing you to get a license restriction one na hindi dumadaan sa training, in na wala naman talagang training course na in-institute because wala tayong batas that supports it. All of that is inherited eh. And that's why we have the problem now. Rueca concluded his piece with these lines. We should start with ourselves and we should start doing what we can. And hopefully, we get to educate everybody on how it is to have safer roads and how to conduct safer roads. Mr. George Rieka, ANCAS Chief Transport Advocate. Our guest this week on Motoring Today's Motoring Forum, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam. My passion, my blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa akong marap sa anumang di nasa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, Bagyong Ondoy, papatrol kami sa Enlex nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nag-desisyon kami na sagapin at iligtas sila. Kami ang Enlex Esitex Patrol Crew, kaagapay at katawag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay. The Tactical Survival and Arms Expo is back with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. You can also apply for your license to own and possess firearms at the venue. The Expo will take place on November 14-17, to 17, 2019 at the SMX Convention Center, SM Mall of Asia, Pasay City. Admission is free. Pre-register online now. Continuing with motoring today, here once again is this week's series of valuable motoring tips. We start off with road safety reminders on the Young Street Smarts portion, courtesy of Toyota Motor Philippines. Kung marami kayong sasakyan na nakahinto sa intersection, keep in mind that the first to stop is the first to go. This way, maiiwasan ang banggaan at iba pang aksidente. Proper driver's demeanor, especially among drivers of public utility vehicles, is one of the major concerns we are addressing on our segment, Bayog Chuper, courtesy of Mitsubishi Motor Philippines. Bayog Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Jeffrey, isang kapwa niyo, Chuper. Huwag mong hayaang may sumabit sa likuran ng iyong jeep. Delikado ang may sabit sa jeep. Maaring pagmula nito ng aksidente at may masaktan o masawi. Kapag puno na sa loob at may gusto pang humabol, agad na pagbawalan upang disgrasya ay maiwasan. Tandaan, kaligtasan bago ang ano paman. Ito po si Jeffrey Hamot, payong chuper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa niyo chuper. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam.
my passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break, get up, and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, Protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV-blocking sunglasses. And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. We're back. We now welcome you to Motor in today's world of motorsports. We start with the latest news and developments. On Friday, November 8, and Saturday, November 9, we will see the holding of the final leg of the 2019 Vios Racing Festival at the Clark International Speedway in Pampanga. The final two days of motorsports action celebrating Toyota's Wakudoki spirit at the Speedway will determine the champions in the three classes, celebrity, promotional, and sporting classes of the Vios Circuit Championship. The One Make Race series, using virtually stock all-new Vios cars, with all classes starting from the same grid, has seen exciting and fiercely competitive wheel-to-wheel -wheel races in the first two legs, with many different drivers celebrating on the podium following each race. The celebrity class is expected to see the likes of Troy Montero, Daniel Matsunaga, Gretchen Ho, and Aubrey Miles battling for podium places. In the promotional class, Many expect Lady Driver Elise Minorga, who won two of the three races in the second leg, to again be in the running for podium finishes. Seen to be her rivals in class are Julian Tang and Julian Neri, as well as Francis Adriano, all of whom figured in the podium in the second leg. Expected to heat up in the competition in the sporting class are Eggy Ong, Lord Seno, Mark Sung, John Dizon, all of whom are regular podium finishers. Also expected to be highly competitive is the final round of the Vios All Across Challenge, a major attraction of the festival which sees participants competing to see who can set the best time around an obstacle course. The competition is open to Vios owners, members of Vios clubs, social media influencers, and invited motoring media guests. The Vios Racing Festival is open to the public for free. On Sunday, November 10, we will see the holding of the 2019 MSDP Gymkhana National Finals. 
winners of the various rounds of the regional gym kind of competitions held by the Motorsports Development Program of the Automobile Association Philippines in various cities nationwide are expected to compete in the National Gym Ghana Finals at the Mega Tent Events venue in Libis, Quezon City. Drivers from as far as Zamboanga, Cagayan de Oro, Iloilo, Davao, and Cebu who participated in the Gym Ghana regional competitions, which are open to all those who competed in MSDP driving and racing seminars, are expected to join the finals on Sunday. They will compete around a Gym Ghana course using Mazda 2 Sky Active cars. More in the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today, as we now give you Race Weekend. We've been featuring rounds of the 2019 Philippine Holocaust Championship Series on Race Weekend since its flag off this year. Following the progress of the overall and class championships, it was well worth the coverage as it was full of great performances from championship contenders as well as newbies to autocross. We're now in the 8th and final round of this year's season. Highlights and interviews are up next. It is billed as the final showdown, the 8th and the last round of the 2019 Philippine Holocaust Championship Series. The popular grassroots motorsports series has been seeking greener pastures this season, holding events in more venues outside its erstwhile home track. The Mikawayan Commercial Complex in Bulacan looking to expand its reach among racing aficionados. And true to that, the final round was held in a Robinson's Mall in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Something that Philippine Holocaust Championship Series top honcho Danny Santiago hints is a sign of things to come for his sport. On the sidelines of the 8th and final round of the series, while the sound of cars of drivers completing their final runs continue to reverberate around the short and tight course marked out by pylons. Danny Santiago is assessing the 2019 Holocaust season. Well, the year 2019 was a good year, no? Maraming sumali and uh, maraming first-timers, maraming mga datihan and they enjoy joining. And sana next year, eh, ganun pa rin or more. This success is emboldening Danny to pursue the expansion of the series outside of Metro Manila and nearby provinces to regions farther south. Marami na sumasali from other regions and they're also enjoying the autocross and next year we will be expanding again, hopefully, to Visayas and Mindanao. Even before the 2019 is over, Danny appears to be already preparing for the big expansion next year and experimenting with innovations to continue fanning interest in the sport. For this year, we have about three more races, specials, invitational. Kung saan saan, we have an experimental night race. Pasasara natin yung ilaw para mahirapan sila. And uh, we have uh, some provincial races in Luzon. We have one in Bohol upcoming. And we have maybe one more in Davao on December. And then next year, Maybe we can get into the series na for Visayas Mindanao. With the overall championship already decided during the earlier round in favor of the phenom in Nigo Anton, who bested his own father Carlos for the title. Interest in the final showdown focused on the fight for novice overall championship, a duel between young gun Cody Nang and Johnny-come-lately Edwin Sarmenta. The young gun appears to be more focused on winning, while Johnny-come-lately is more laid back in his approach to the sport. For me, uh, focus lang talaga. Okay lang, whoever wins, sport. Pero, pero din naman akong NMC eh, sa novice modified C. So, if Cody wins, then he's a better driver than me. Okay lang. This is evident even in the race preparations. Ang pinaka prep ko lang dito sa car is naglagay lang ako ng parang extended na handbrake so nakakatulong naman siya and I hope na makakuha ko ng good times later. Preparations for this one's actually wala taong tulog kasi umuwi ako like 12 o'clock last night and uh, so chinek ko lang yung pressure, tire pressure, chinek ko yung mga yung water level, oil level, yun lang. Tsaka tinitin ko yung mga bolts. 
Despite the seemingly lackadaisical approach to autocross and motorsports, Edwin is nonetheless already thinking of the next season. So, malamang next season, nasa experience class na ako, so more practice for me. Also already looking forward to the next season is Pauline Bautista, one of the few girls and ladies making waves in autocross. This after a great final round of the great season for improvement of driving skills and earning podiums. Masasabi ko lang na ano, I really improved a lot, like a lot talaga. Kasi syempre, like kada race may bago ako natututunan, tapos ngayon parang may bagong mga nalalagay sa car. So like yung pagdadrive ko, medyo nagiging okay siya. Tapos ngayon, yung round yan, parang this was probably the best one. Kasi parang wala, ang exciting lang niya kasi last round yan, tapos naka-score pa ako ng first sa ladies. Forward to um, more podiums and more learnings to come. This season of autocross has attracted more and more racers to the sport. This includes Peter Mendoza, who shifted from two-wheel to four-wheel racing. Before, I was motocross, eh, so I was able to get my car, so I was able to get autocross. I was able to get my car, because I was able to get my car, and at the same time, I was able to get my car. So, as time passes, while I was able to get my competition, I was able to get my competition, and I was able to get my car as experience. After a number of rounds competing in autocross this year, Peter Mendoza is looking forward to next season. Siguro sa mga may darating pang round ng Philippine Autocross, sasali pa din ako kasi ano, try, try and try lang hanggang sa makapodium. Near the end of another successful autocross season, Danny Santiago is proud to see those he calls his drivers competing in other forms of racing and hopes to see new drivers coming into autocross. A lot of my drivers, autocross drivers, have been graduating to other disciplines of motorsports. They try going into the racetrack, mas buo na loob nila. Thank you for those who have supported the Philippine Autocross. Hopefully, you'll still be there next year for those interested to join and who are joining. Mag-update lang kayo sa Facebook ng Philippine Autocross. And see you! Well, it seems like the season has not ended for all across, as Danny Santiago is looking to organize a number of invitationals, perhaps in preparation for extending the series and the motorsport discipline further up north and down south. Motoring Today and Race Weekend will surely be following this development with interest. That's this week's World of Motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for.
seven-seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. The Tactical Survival and Arms Expo is back with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. You can also apply for your license to own and possess firearms at the venue. The Expo will take place on November 14 to 17, 2019 at the SMX Convention Center, SM Mall of Asia, Pasay City. Admission is free. Pre-register online now. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Isuzu Philippines gathered the motoring media along with IPC executives and officers and representatives from the Isuzu Kagende Auto Dealership for a lifestyle tour to the island's well-known and most picturesque spots on board the new D-MAX LSA pickups. We are here right now at the very beautiful island of Kamigim to test drive the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA, which is our latest addition to the premium pickup segment in the country. Kamigin has indeed shown that the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA is tough enough for anything. This hardworking vehicle does not just carry with it a lifestyle attitude. It performs that attitude and it performs excellently and reliably which makes it rise above the rest of the pickup segment. We decided to update and upgrade the D-MAX. So this is a very special variant because we know that now the use of the pickup is becoming more of a lifestyle. So for those that really enjoy going out on weekends, but that still wants to use the pickup on weekdays on their business, the D-MAX LSA is a perfect vehicle for them. Dubbed the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA Media Test Drive, the assembly explored the mountainous Kamigin, the country's second smallest island province. According to Isuzu, the terrain was ideal for a diesel utility workhorse such as the D-MAX LSA to showcase its tough enough for anything functionality. Uh, we found a lot in common between Kamigin and the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA. Both are beautiful and rugged. Both offer lifestyle possibilities from business to recreation. These also must offer something irresistible and uh, adventure in all of us. It was personally amazed by the beautiful of coming in. Day one of the new D-MAX LSA media test drive saw the participants take a 30-minute drive from the provincial capital, Mambajau, to Taguinas Lagoon. From there, a 40-minute drive to the island's interior brought to the group to the Tres Marias Hill, a tree of domes dotting the island's most prominent geological feature, the towering and still active stratovolcano Mount Hibokibo. A 10-minute drive on unpaved roads then led to the cold yet refreshing Tuasan Falls. Day 2 of the trip saw the group spend the morning on the powder white sandbar, a mere 15-minute speedboat ride on the clear blue Bohol Sea. These activities and drives prove the power and capabilities of the D-MAX LSA. To all the televiewers, especially those looking for a stylish yet functional vehicle, check out the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA in any of the Isuzu dealerships in Nationwide and see for yourself its new features and discover its functionality and durability that is above anybody else. Thank you very much. Legato Motors Incorporated, the exclusive distributor of GAC Motor in the Philippines, has officially launched one of its flagship models, the GS3. We're quite excited with our launch of the GS3. We know it's a new product, but as far as the features that we brought in, we made sure that it's really up for the market. At 888,000, we feel that this is the car that's basically good and acceptable for the market. As presented during the launch, the GS3 is a modern subcompact crossover that comes with design, specifications, and features that surpass expectations in its class. The GS3 exterior combines classic chrome elements with a trendy, sporty aerodynamic design, while the vehicle's cockpit experience is enhanced by the premium leather and fabric lining of its interiors. Digital conveniences such as a state-of-the-art infotainment system that integrates an 8-inch TFT color display with Bluetooth hands-free phone connectivity make the GS3 more luxurious. 
When it comes to the powertrain, the GS3 is available in two variants, both gasoline-powered with 6-speed automatic transmission and a compliant with Euro 5 emission standards. The 150N variant has a 1.5-liter DC VVT engine that produces 113 horsepower and 150 Nm of torque, while the 200T variant has a 1.3-liter turbocharged DC VVT engine rated to make 136 horsepower and 202 Nm of torque. According to Legato Motors, they are excited to enter the market at a time where there is a great demand for vehicles that respond to the modern lifestyle of consumers. The company added that they are confident that their value propositions will have discerning Filipino car owners take a second look at their innovative vehicles and own the GAC experience. It will be available in our dealership so our consumer can come to our showroom. We have one in Pasig, Tarlac, Pampanga. They can go and check it out. Ford Philippines has expanded its retail footprint with the opening of its newest dealership facility in Marikina, operated by a new dealer group. Operated by MOS Auto Solutions, incorporated headed by its chairman Ramon Manzana, President Jedrick Manzana, and general manager Carlos Dong Aberin, Ford Marikina is one of the biggest dealerships of the automotive company in the country, operating on a total floor area of 11,000 square meters with an 8-car showroom display, 26 service bays including express service and body and paint, and two interactive bays. This is our 49th facility across the Ford Philippines market and this also comes in with uh, the latest identity from the corporate standpoint from a retail perspective that it looks towards the customers. Marikina as an economy hub is very fast and emerging. It's important that we have right representation of our brand in this part of the city. So from that standpoint it is going to contribute to the overall growth of the Ford brand across Manila and Philippines in general and uh, Ford Marikina will be an important part of it. In addition, Ford Marikina is one of the first dealership facilities in the country to follow the new global dealership branding guidelines of Ford, showcasing a more globally aligned exterior and interior look and feel, called Ford Signature. Ford Marikina is the newest of the facility that is open in the region, if not just Philippines. And what is more important is that it comes with the latest retail identity for Ford, where some of the elements that you see here is designed in such a manner to make sure customers are feeling more convenient with large open spaces, easier places for discussion, access to Wi-Fi, easier engagement with the consumers, and also the service facility which is open and inviting. So it kind of celebrates the latest customer space which is more savvy, more technologically advanced, and more engaging. So it, it connotes to all of those expectations very clearly. According to Ford, the opening of the newest addition to the brand's leadership network in the country testifies to the growing preference of customers in the eastern part of Manila towards Ford. Our showroom has also been designed in line with Ford's global dealership guidelines, which aims to offer customers a better dealership environment and experience. I would like to invite everyone to come visit our new Ford Marikina showroom. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Ford Marikina is located at Lot 2 Sumulong Highway, Barangay Santonino, Marikina City, and can be contacted at 8256-6694. Mitsu Fest Philippines has announced that the annual gathering of Mitsubishi car owners will be happening on November 9, 2019 at the Hacienda Designer Outlets in Silang, Cavite. Mitsu Fest Philippines is the biggest gathering of Mitsubishi car clubs. No? We've been doing this for the last four years. It started in 2016 at Blue Bay, Makapagal. And you know we were surprised at the amount of car clubs who went. We have all participants from all models of Mitsubishi and their car clubs you know, came you know, from Mirage, to Adventure, to Pajeros, to Monteros, to you know all the vintage Lancers and the Galants and everything. And back in 2016, we were overwhelmed with the support that the Mitsubishi Car Club community gave to Mitsufest. And because of that, we've been doing it every year already. You know? This year's Mitsufest theme is all about the legendary Mitsubishi models such as the Galant, Lancer, Pajero, and L300, which what made Mitsubishi a household name amongst Filipino families. These models will be heavily featured during the event. Admission to the event is absolutely free you know, for all um, enthusiasts and fans of Mitsubishi. So you know, it's a really great opportunity for everyone. 
According to the organizers, more than 30 Mitsubishi car clubs and over 2,000 Mitsubishi enthusiasts are expected to join this big event. In this year's Mitsubishi, the co-presenter will be Caltex Philippines. And the biggest promo we've ever had is that Caltex will be giving away a Save Plus card to all car entries. What is a Save Plus card? It's basically a discount card that gets you 2 pesos off gasoline and 1 peso off diesel. Another thing that attendees can look forward to is the car club activities. No? Yearly, we have a scavenger hunt, a game wherein all car clubs participate and we give prizes from mag wheels, free fuel, free lubes, tents, you know, all of these prizes we give away for car clubs. And all we're asking is for car clubs to participate during our event because we have a lot of games, we have a lot of activities, and this event is mainly for the family. You know? So we'd like to invite everyone to bring their kids, you know, and bring, bring their dogs, bring everyone, uh, bring everyone with them. Interested car owners and car clubs who wish to display their Mitsubishi cars may still register at www.mitsufest.com. All Mitsubishi fans and enthusiasts are welcome, so bring your family, bring your friends over, and hope to see you there. SMC Asia Car Distributors, the official importer and distributor of BMW cars and motorcycles in the Philippines, has inaugurated the latest Motorrad dealership in the country. Located at No. 184 Yolio Rodriguez Jr. Avenue, Quezon City, RSA Motors Motorrad is the largest standalone BMW Motorrad facility in the country. That makes two leaderships officially up and running in just a span of two weeks. BMW Motorrad is a motorcycle division of uh, BMW. We cater to different lines. No? We have urban mobility, we have scooters, we have the biggest adventure bikes, which is our 1250 GS Adventure, then everything in between. We have sport bikes, we have light adventure, we have roadsters like a 310R. We have also, of course, very important, our heritage line in the R90. We have 27 variants altogether of BMW motorcycles. Additionally, RSA Motors Motorrad features a comprehensive service area, offering five bays where customers can drop off their two-wheeled machines for routine maintenance and quick checkups. Furthermore, there are two dedicated customization bays to highlight the optional range of accessories if customers wish to further individualize their BMW R9 T. The main floor of the showroom also showcases officially licensed BMW Motorrad lifestyle items as well as BMW riding gear for the best combination of style and protection. Also during the event, SMC Asia Car Distributors launched the BMW S1000 RR. This is the uh, new version of the sport bike. Can you imagine? 200 horsepower, less than 200 kilos. So, in two wheels, right? So, I don't think I need to tell you how the combination will turn out, right? Check out our latest dealership uh, in, uh, here in Libis, so 184 E. Rodriguez Avenue. And this is the new latest BMW Motorrad showroom. This showroom will have uh, all the, the entire lineup of BMW Motorrad on display. Plus, we also have riding gear, riding equipment, helmets, jackets, shirts, everything. It will all under one roof, no? And also for the current BMW Motorrad owners, we also invite you to check out also the latest service center here and also all the other dealerships we have in the city. We opened one a Motor Ace BMW Danghari 12 days ago only. And for our riders in the south, it's just in Danghari, just a little bit past the Villa Mall. For those of you in the extreme north, there's always Premier Cars Pampanga. So we have these three motorcycle dealers, uh, BMW Motora dealers in Luzon, ready to serve all the customers. We have more about the local auto industry as we now give you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. The Honda Civic has always been a popular, mainly because it's practical yet stylish and it could take competition against other nameplates easily. So when the Civic Type R was officially launched in the Philippine market two years ago, fans and enthusiasts of the model were giddy to see more of it. In this week's Showcase, we're showing you what the Civic Type R could offer. Watch this.
That was the Honda Civic Type R. Jam-packed with details and features that make it stand out. Our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program. 100% worry-free driving. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Now we have our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. The LRT2 was recently on fire, literally and figuratively, after an incident that led to the partial shutdown of its operations from Cubao to Recto and back. We visited its Santolan station and obviously, the commuters from the east side of the metro are the most affected. We talked to some of them and asked how they are being affected with this problem. All of them having the same woes. Siyempre, mahirap <laughs> dahil matagal ang biyahe. Hindi katulad, no, mabilis. Mahirap, tap, matrapik, matagal, two hours minsa kami nakakarating sa trabaho. Of course, lagi kami nalilate. Like, one hour kami nalilate. Dumadating kami sa point na second subject na kami nakakabaso. Sobrang stuck kami sa traffic kasi minsan hindi available yung mga free rides and bus dito sa LRT Santolan. So, we need to ride jeep to Cubao and then we transfer into um, UDRM para makababa kami sa school namin. Sobrang apektado po kasi yung class ko po is 10.30 minsan or 1.00. Pero nalilate pa rin po ako ng sobra. Following the partial shutdown, the government was quick to respond by providing free shuttle rides to commuters as well as granting franchises for buses to fly in the route. However, those rides do not give the same convenience that the LRT2 can provide, according to them. Well, yung sa mga buses naman po, eh, 
Hindi naman po siyang difference sa Jeep or sa LRT kasi yung rate din naman niya po, parehas lang din naman siya. But yung, para sa akin, yung inconvenient niya is, minsan talaga ang tagal niyang dumating din and natotraffic pa din kami kasi nandito kami sa baba, hindi kami nasa taas. Medyo nakakatipid pero kasi minsan hindi ko din inexpect yung sobrang habang pila kaya mas angat pa din talagang lagi akong nalilate kesa na nagbe-benefit ako dun sa libreng sakay. Ngayon lang medyo may yung pila kaya okay naman ko. All the commuters we talk to look forward to the operations of the LRT2. We do hope that the authorities and the government will give their very best and do all they can to end the commuters' whoops. That was Motoring Today's public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. We'd like to once again urge the public to help us solve motoring problems in our midst by referring them to us so we can in turn bring them into the attention of involved authorities. Please refer to the screen regarding our contact details. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on our social media accounts. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 33rd year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.